Okay, hi everybody. Um, welcome to another interview from Online Educa Berlin 2012. With me is Michael Trucano. He is um, from the World Bank and um, sort of specialist about um, ICT implementations in education. He is also the as I heard, the main contributor of the World Bank's blog on education. So, Michael, thanks for having a few minutes for us. Yeah, thanks a lot. It's great to be here. So, your uh, keynote today started actually uh, with failures, things not to do. And um, what's it like in developing countries? Do they really look at what the OECD countries do and try to implement this? Or is it more our way of thinking that um, they would um, look at what we are doing and not have their own solutions developed? Yeah, so that's a great question. Um, you know, a lot of the what's published about educational technology use comes from OECD environments, and especially from the US, and it's especially in English. Um, and most of the firms that are active in this area are from those places as well. And in other parts of the education sector, uh, there's oftentimes a, a greater willingness for countries to look at what their comparator countries are doing, or even other countries, or what OECD countries did in the past. But in educational technology stuff, People want to benchmark against the best, for better or for worse. They say that we don't want something second best or second class. They say that we may make different use of these technologies, but really, for better or for worse, middle and low income countries oftentimes get their information from and benchmark against sort of OECD experience. Um, and that presents you know, various challenges and, I guess, opportunities as well. So when I look uh, over the conference, whether they are sponsors or not, but um, North Africa and the Middle East is highly represented. Is this also what you've been sort of working with the most, or is it a um, completely different part of the world? So we, so I work globally. Um, we're seeing that there's a tremendous amount of interesting things going on in Latin America. That's where I've been spending. Uh, a lot of my time recently because there, there are huge things going on and will be announced in places like Sao Paulo and what's been happening in Uruguay is something we uh, pay very close attention to. That's the first country in the world, or second, uh, I guess after Niue, um, a small Pacific Island nation, where every public school uh, student has her own free laptop. And they've found interesting things that happen when they make that sort of big investment. It's an investment they've made um, based on a lot of beliefs and ideas. And it's one they acknowledge and they don't know exactly. Sort of, they jumped off a big cliff. They don't know quite how they're going to land. But they know they need to land safely. And they know they need to take, uh, they need to take some risks. You know, their young people are going to be competitive in a global, you know, globalized workforce, globally competitive environment. And I think this is a type of risk or type of investment will help get them there. When we speak of technology in those countries, and certainly a lot of things is happening in Brazil, um, you mentioned Uruguay, um, I know that Brazil has relatively good internet and also a fast connection. Um, you mentioned laptops. What technology are we talking of? Because here is obviously very much now tablets, mobile, and I mean, we are all talking here yeah, not to implement or integrate technology for technology's sake only, but um, what are they, at what state are they, and what makes sense in the most of the context? Yeah, what, what, what people want and what makes sense aren't necessarily always the same thing. Um, today, for better or for worse, everybody's talking about tablets. Mm -hmm. What do you know about tablets? Uh, what can you recommend with tablets? Um, fair enough. We got the same questions five years ago about low-cost laptops. Literally the exact same questions five years ago. Ten years ago about uh, uh, desktop computers and computer lab arrangements. When we get these types of inquiries, we try to walk people back a few steps and say, well, why? Mm -hmm. Tablets are great technology. Five years from now, we may be talking about something else. Increasingly, we're seeing uh, the integration of various types of technologies. One thing that the interactive whiteboards, however you feel about them, one thing that they've done is to introduce this idea that you are investing in a sort of an ecosystem, a whole set of different products uh, and services that have to interact with each other. Um, so while tablets are sort of the, the flavor of the month, perhaps the flavor of the next couple of years, um, really uh, we are sort of agnostic about this particular technology or form factor, form factor because we think really you should be the choice of your technology should be a result of really reasoned debate and consideration of what you want to accomplish. Some basic questions you need to ask yourself. And if a tablet 
is part of a larger solution, to use the term that industry likes to use, um, <laughs> then, uh, then, then go for it. But really, uh, leading with the technology is, uh, we've seen time and time again, is a recipe for, uh, for failure. I think so, because uh, things are happening so fast, and to really make it depend on a certain uh, device or category of devices is probably not very uh, smart. <laughs> yeah, and we see, um, like what content is built. We see, in some cases, we know content that was originally made available for print was then adapted for desktop and, ta and notebook environments and now is being adapted again for tablet environments as opposed to, and then some cases even ported to handhelds, uh, phones, and you know, I think we have to ask ourselves, are you taking advantage of the particular affordances offered by whatever device you're talking about, simply repurposing content that's perhaps best used, if it is indeed best used on one device, for another, this may not get you where you want to be. So then the question is, of course, uh, what is most exciting for you at the moment, for you personally or in context of the world? So um, you started off by asking about sort of OECD experience, developed country experience, European, North American experience, and how that is seen to be relevant to middle and low income countries. Um, what I think is an untold story going on here is how what's happening in middle and low income countries and what will happen in the future, how it's relevant to a lot of these more developed markets. Where technologies are being introduced, where there are certain types of scarcity, mm -hmm. where there are challenges that are very real, um, and where there are companies developing to respond to these specific challenges, Chinese com companies, Indian companies, Turkish companies, Brazilian companies, just in African companies, to respond to specific challenges in those markets. We think um, there will be interesting innovations, so we're seeing them emerge, that will actually be relevant to quote unquote developed countries in the old world uh, in ways that people are perhaps not expecting. Um, feel what's happened in the mobile banking area? Absolutely, coming from Africa now to, to us. Yeah, where mobile banking basically didn't quite die, but around 2000 in Europe and North America, most of these things fizzled out because you could bank at your local bank, your ATM, uh, perhaps through your television at home on the internet. Whereas in the Philippines, where they really got started, they realized that they didn't have these things, but they did have this computer in their pocket that they could use, and that experience was translated to Kenya. Now we're seeing it being adapted and sort of imported back into Europe and in the States. Uh, you know, Kenyan and, and Philippine ingenuity with technology. People would have thought that it wouldn't have been on their radar screen 10 or 5 years ago, and it should be on their radar screen. Before. I think so as well, making the most out, out of simple technology and not only after 6 months going on to the next device or fancy um, product service. Uh, yeah, yeah, definitely fascinating. Absolutely, and that's where we see where it's, So what's really interesting to me in my job, in addition to hopefully um, being able to help people make, at least ask perhaps some better questions and make more informed decisions, uh, and uh, is to see what's happening in all these interesting places around the world and people are utilizing technologies not because they are uh, um, sort of what's new and latest, or not because it's something special, but because it's really something vital to daily life. It's vital to solving the challenges that they have, maybe that have been around for a long time and been seemingly intractable, but technology offers a way to sort of reconfigure the landscape and try different things in different ways. So I can only recommend um, the World Bank blog, and if you want to follow Michael on Twitter, that's very easy, that's at Chupano, and the World Bank blog is at WB at you tip. Yeah, so W, so our Twitter handle, the official one is WB Edutech, and if you just search World Bank Edutech on the web, you'll find our blog as well. Absolutely. So thanks, Michael, for your insights. It was a very good talk. I enjoyed it. And uh, yeah, enjoy the conference on Berlin a little bit more. Thanks, Lockers. Cheers. <laughs>